Supermicro offered me the chance to travel to their headquarters and see what they got cooking up ahead of the uh, GTC conference. So I got a peek behind the curtain. See, it's important to understand, NVIDIA is not just rocketing to the moon. They're bringing a lot of partners with them. Supermicro just entered the S&P 500, so hey, congratulations Supermicro. And they're increasing their production capacity to about 5,000 racks per month. Yeah, Supermicro customers can order entire racks of gear. So I've got four videos on Supermicro coming up for all of the different offerings that they have across all of the different universes, different ecosystems of product. You've got HGX at the edge and MGX where you start to blur the lines a little bit of where the compute is happening, data center, and even AI workstations. They can do whole data center cooling with a five megawatt cooling tower. There's a lot of content to cover, so please be sure to check out these four videos that I've got from Supermicro. At GTC, we heard all about Blackwell. Blackwell's launching. This is the GB200 NV72. And there's 72 of them in this rack. It's not just that you can have 72 GPUs in a rack. I mean, that's cool and all, but you need to connect them. And I've got Vic to help me explain, this is, this is our NVLink switch to connect this, like 72 way, like is this a 72 dimensional cluster? Like what am I looking at here? Thanks Wendell. So as exciting as the Hopper platforms are, you know, which is the de facto standard right now, um, if you want to have something that scales beyond that, you know, within a given uh, footprint, let's say for example, if you were to take uh, the standard H100 platforms, uh, eight of them in a single system, and that's going to have like 640 gigabytes of memory, right? That's how much memory that it can handle. But anything beyond that, it's going to be connected to other systems using Connect, you know, uh, Connect X7. But what if you want to have a larger memory footprint? What if you want to have a much bigger GPU that you want to have access to? That's where this comes into picture. That's what uh, the all excitement about. Each GPU has four links back to the switch. There's basically a dedicated connection for every GPU. Yeah, the tricky part here is that, you know, this is like getting uh, quite complex, but quite exciting too, right? So each of these uh, systems actually have two nodes. Each node has a single socket CPU, which is uh, the grace in this case, and two of the Blackwell GPUs. This actually gives you the density of across 18 systems, you have 72 GPUs. But at the same time, these systems are connected using NVLink through the NV switches, which actually creates a very large single GPU footprint with cache coherency. That is going to be the biggest kicker. You're talking about 720 petaflops of compute in a single rack. I think that's the kicker here. A single rack with cache coherency is just insane. Yeah, so basically what ends up happening is, you know, single, th think of this as a single building block, right? So what we're trying to do is to make it easy for customers to adopt it. So in this case, you have uh, the compute nodes, you have the NV switches, you have the power shelf, which is actually connecting all the, you know, uh, distributing the power across all these nodes and switches, but you also have the fabric on the back of the uh, enclosure, which, you know, you will see later, so it's going to be connecting these things, but as multiple racks are getting connected, you also have the network connectivity in the front to be able to, you know, do that connections as well. So these systems, you know, you can have like whether you want to have two racks, four racks, kind of a thing, you can expand from there. So what the amount of compute power that you can get from that is just mind-boggling, and the and either FP8 or FP16, whatever the kind of uh, AI performance that you are looking for, this is going to basically blow anything out of water at this point. Yeah, a lot of the software really is not built for uh, the parallelism that it would need to run on disparate systems or separate systems. And so by taking care of that in hardware, it means that you don't have to worry about that as much in software. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, you, you said it right. I think uh, no two customers are same, no two workloads are same. So we need to kind of have different uh, solutions for different workloads. But the idea again here is you take one large one, you can always make it into smaller fragments to take care of smaller workloads. And it's not necessarily the case with the other way around, right? So the scalability is, becomes an important factor and we are able to it. One thing's clear at GTC, NVIDIA wants to take over the universe, or more specifically, the data center part of the universe. NVIDIA sees itself as being involved in a whole bunch of different industries now because they can offer turnkey solutions to let you deploy AI within your organization. If you really want to embrace what NVIDIA is selling, they're selling you five racks at a time, DGX, and this is the hub and spoke thing that they talked about in their press release and, and their other material. This is where NVIDIA sees its growth market. Basically, they come in and they say, we've got the complete hardware and software solution. In the same way that NVIDIA provides CUDA as an abstraction layer to their hardware, NVIDIA is hoping that their DGX offerings will provide an abstraction layer to data centers. And 
Really, they've already got quite a head start on this. They're selling entire rack scale systems. They're dealing with the switching and networking technology. They do seem to be a couple of steps ahead here in terms of anticipating customer needs. And bringing new customers on board, NVIDIA could handle a lot of the expertise that normally an organization would have to spool up internal expertise in order to be able to deploy this. Think about deploying a PCIe GPU. We see PCIe GPUs all around the show floor here. You're gonna need a lot of expertise to be able to use that. Meanwhile, the 72 Blackwell system that we saw from Supermicro, you can deploy that and your single instance Python application will run just as well on that as it runs on a single GPU. That's the... <laughs> That's part of NVIDIA's growth market here. It's like, ah, don't, don't worry about it, don't figure it out. We'll help you figure it out, and we will uh, benefit in the business wins of that together. So MGX, DGX, HGX, it's NVIDIA vernacular, but Supermicro is the one that are actually implementing some of this stuff. So MGX, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. It's the platform. Grace Hopper or Grace Hopper and then you're going to take out some of it and add Blackwell and that's their complete ecosystem so an ARM CPU plus their GPUs. DGX is data center scale so five racks at a time typically. You have one rack for your NVLink and then you have all of your other machines that are connected to that and then HGX is a more traditional platform what we would expect for connecting uh, PCI Express peripherals together maybe even open compute but that's more on the HGX side. But Supermicro is implementing all of HGX, DGX, and MGX, depending on whatever scale you're looking for or whatever solution you're looking for. And you can see this platform is not super complicated looking. You've got storage at the front, you've got the super chips, and then you've just got PCI Express connectivity to the back. Four GPUs here. Even just a single rack system like this, NVIDIA thinks is a good starting point for getting your toes in the water with the MGX platform because they figure a lot of data center customers are already on HGX or a PCIe type platform and then they need to move up to something. Well, this could be your first foray into the Grace Hopper super chip or a GH200 solution or you know Blackwell or whatever comes next. So it's a 72 core Grace Arm Neoverse V2 with up to 480 gigs of LPDDR5X plus 144 gigs of HBM3 fast access memory per chip per node. Now the promise of MGX is originally from Computex in 2023. So these are technically second generation MGX products. And the idea with MGX is that NVIDIA is bringing together with partners like Supermicro compute at the edge that includes CPUs, DPUs, and GPUs. And you know, an ARM-based NVIDIA CPU or NVIDIA OVX systems, you, you could bring it all together. You know, the GB200 plus the Grace CPU uh, with Bluefield or ConnectX7. And this is gonna power digital twin, high performance computing and data analysis, AI, cloud gaming, cloud services, 5G, and other edge type applications. Think of this as a brick that you can use and deploy immediately in your existing infrastructure, but is a cohesive, tested, fully integrated solution spanning CPU, GPU, and connectivity. 2024 is my first GTC, and boy, this was interesting. Big thanks to Supermicro for bringing me out here, mainly so I could tour their campus and take a look at some of their things, but that's gonna be in another video. My campus tour of Supermicro, looking at their cooling tower and their liquid-cooled racks, and. Well, I mean, I did get to see all the new Blackwell stuff. I mean, all of the H100 systems that I've taken a look at, yeah, they're dropping ready for Blackwell, but NVIDIA is focusing on the DGX stuff first. So again, big thanks to Supermicro for bringing me out, and uh, yeah, look out for those other videos, especially the one where I'm touring Supermicro's campus. Mm -hmm.